Am I the asshole for telling my husband he's being a bad father? I 30 female am married to my husband Jack 37 male for 3 years. We have a daughter together Hannah 3 and my stepdaughter Ashley, his daughter from a precious relationship, is 10. Hannah started dance classes this year. This is her first year performing at a recital and we were all very excited. We had tickets for all three shows, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and couldn't wait to watch her perform. Ashley found out earlier this week she'd be performing for her school chorus. The girl who originally was going to do it got sick. Ashley's performance was Sunday at the same time as Hannah's dance recital that night. Ashley told me how it would mean a lot to her if we went. So I worked it out with the dance school that Hannah would go the recital that night with my parents and Jack and I would go watch Ashley performance. I would have pulled Hannah from dance but I was afraid she would want to sing during Ashley's performance and Ashley should be able to have her own moment. When I told my husband he was so upset. He said he wanted to be there for all of Hannah's performances and we shouldn't be pawning her off on my parents. I said my parents were going to the show anyway and her best friend's mom will help her with the costume. I helped her daughter the day prior. He said I was crazy if I thought sending our three-year-old without us was a good idea. She stayed with her grandparents and gone to do things with them before. I told him he was being stupid and that Ashley needed her dad too. He refused to go and went with Hannah and told me to meet him at the dance recital. I went to Ashley's performance instead. While I was there I was saying hello to Ashley's mother and ended up finding out Jack never answered her about if he could bring her new black shoes. Ashley didn't realize until today the ones at her mom's house were too small, doesn't wear them often, and I didn't want her to feel different from the other kids. Luckily I got there early and there's a shoe store down the street so I went to buy some and told her mom to keep them there so she has a pair at both houses now. When I went home my husband and I got into a huge argument. He said I let down Hannah and she was sad. I told him to keep in mind she's three she always wants us and then forgets about it in five minutes when she sees something else she wants. I told him he needs to remember we have another child to also think about not just Hannah. I told him he was an awful father for not showing up for Ashley and for not even mentioning she needed shoes. Even if he wasn't going the least he could do was bring her the shoes. Him and I are still arguing and he's sleeping on the couch. He won't even talk to me and honestly I don't want to talk to him either. I feel like I might have crossed the line calling him a bad father. I was really angry. Am I the asshole? Edit 1. I just realized I didn't say why the shoes were mentioned. He asked me what that charge was for and when I told him he was mad I bought shoes for her mother's house. He said he pays enough in child support and buy her things for our house so it's ridiculous. Edit 2. This morning Jack and I took the girls out for breakfast. During breakfast Jack was telling Ashley about Hannah dance recitals. Ashley wasn't able to make the recitals because she had practice for chorus the other two nights. Ashley asked if that's why he missed her singing and Jack said yes. Ashley said her mom recorded it and maybe we could all watch it together one night so he could see. Jack made a comment about her mother. I didn't hear exactly what he said but by Ashley's reaction and his face I could tell it wasn't kind. Ashley then went to the bathroom and I told him to cut the comments and that it wasn't necessary. I went to check on Ashley and she was crying. So I texted Jack and told him I was taking both the girls out for the day until he could figure out an apology to Ashley. I told him the same way he wouldn't want someone talking about him or I to Hannah he shouldn't be doing that to Ashley's mother. He could either get therapy and apologize to his daughter or I'd be going to my parents when I get home after taking the girls out. When I got the girls in my car I called Ashley's mom and picked her up. The four of us will be at the amusement park today. Jack has been texting me apologizing all morning. I've already told him I'm not the person he needs to apologize to. Not the asshole. Hannah had recitals three nights in a row and you were at two of them. But Ashley had a performance on just one night and your husband let her down. Your solution made sense and it's sad that you're doing more for your stepdaughter than your husband is. Does he have a pattern of neglecting Ashley for Hannah? Not the asshole. He's punishing Ashley for being his ex-wife's daughter. Thank you for standing up for her. You're being a better parent to Ashley than he is. Not the asshole. You are better parent to your stepdaughter than her father is. She is lucky to have you in her life. Not the asshole. So long as Hannah's grandparents are willing and able to be on toddler duty, then this sounds like a fair compromise. I'm glad Ashley has you on her side, because her father is sounding very dismissive of her. Not the asshole. He was being a bad father. Does he have a pattern in showing favoritism to Hannah?
Am I the asshole for looking out for child's best interest? My husband's mother just passed away, and he has this aunt that is always trying to butt her opinion in on things. We were planning the funeral, and my husband's father was planning on a Saturday. This worked out okay for our children's schedule. This is their last week of preschool, and we had ceremonies first half of the week, and on Friday there was going to be a surprise trip to the zoo for my oldest. This aunt, started making a fuss about the funeral being on a weekend and stated she was being selfish because it's on Mother's Day weekend, and she didn't think it should be on a weekend when out-of-town guests couldn't make it in anyways. Well my husband's father actually took her advice, and switched it to Friday even though he knew his grandson had a special day at school that day. I don't feel like my husband fought hard enough for our child's best interest. He is now going to have to miss the best day of the school year with his friends to attend his grandmother's funeral. I also let the aunt know that she shouldn't have tried to dictate when the funeral should be, and just have left it to immediate family. She is now refusing to help with going through pictures. My husband feels like my response was uncalled for. That this is his mother, and I'm being unreasonable. He says that he feels like I'm saying his mother should have held on one more week because we are busy. He also says that he didn't do this for my father's funeral that happened back in July. If my father would have passed this exact week, I would have fought to protect this day for my son. Every other day that week we could have at least made it work, and get important events in for the children. Am I the asshole for trying to keep that day free for my son? My son not attending the funeral isn't an option because I feel like even kids need that time to process and grieve like us adults. Edit. My son is not a toddler. He is almost six, and understands what is going on to a certain point. We always have the children for the private family funeral where they can say their goodbyes. That is what I mean by children needing that time. The rest of the time an in-law, such as myself in this situation, will sit with them, and keep them occupied for the ones closest. No I have not mentioned this to Phil because he doesn't need to hear about my disappointment. FYI auntie didn't get what she wanted either because she already had a funeral for her in-laws on Friday as well. Update. So I'm the awe. I've apologized to my husband, and will apologize to my Syl because she was there when I found out it was changed. I will apologize to Phil if he caught wind of what happened, but I'm not apologizing to DH's aunt as she was being completely selfish, and just not wanting to attend her sister's funeral when the family wanted to hold it, and made it worse for everyone around. I was only trying to keep my kid's schedule as normal as possible in a very difficult time. How dare some of you for saying that I'm not grieving as well. I may be the in-law, but she was special, and my DH and I helped care for her in her last few months. My children were often over with us becoming really close to their grandmother. This is their second grandparent, that they were close to, they have lost in a year, and me trying to keep schedules as normal as possible is not being selfish. I would never choose a trip to the zoo over offering my child a chance to say goodbye to their beloved grandmother. I admit my reaction was over the top, but my intentions were not selfish. Also sending him to school while this was going on was also not an option as they are carpooling to the zoo, and my child isn't getting into a vehicle with an adult I do not know. Well my husband's father actually took her advice, and switched it to Friday even though he knew his grandson had a special day at school that day. Wait a minute, are you saying that your father-in-law was more focused on planning his wife's funeral than he was on making sure it coordinated with your toddler's schedule, and he actually prioritized his wife's funeral over your toddler's trip to the zoo? The audacity. You are the asshole. Entirely. You are the asshole. Your husband just lost his mom, be there for him the same way he was there for you. The kids will have more school events and celebrations. Okay, so your husband's mother, your child's grandmother died, and you are pissy about what day the funeral has been scheduled. You are the asshole, a zoo trip is nothing compared to the death of your husband's mother. If your son is in preschool, perhaps he should go there rather than a funeral. YTA why are you so worried about a toddler's trip to the zoo? When your husband's mother just died, shouldn't you be there for him while he mourns instead of causing more issues? Am I the asshole for blocking my in-laws? My husband and I have three kids and one on the way. I ran into severe complications and I'm on full bed rest. Need surgical procedures done to save myself, baby. I've had three treatments and they were so expensive, partially covered by insurance that we needed to reach out for help. I only have one treatment left before baby is here, scheduled C-section at 36 weeks, and we don't even have a portion of the cost to cover it, 1200. 
Again, we reached out to his and my family for help and wouldn't have done so if we had any other option. Not a single person helped. I've had my help page up for three weeks and had three donations from my friends. My Sills dog however was just taken to the emergency vet with hind leg issues. The dog needs a procedure done, for $2,900, to get her leg fixed and then will need PT afterwards, and she has stated in her help page that she will need help covering PT cost as well but has no estimate on cost as of currently. Within 8 hours they raised $2,150 and when you go through the donations, it's all family, husbands. From the same people who said to us, sorry honey, we wish we could help, so basically, a dog's hind leg is more important to these people than a surgery needed to save a baby. And I guess it was even more of a hit because of the fact that my husband and I are always the people that they run to for help whenever they need anything, moving, rides, groceries, event planning, etc. I didn't even speak to my husband about it first because I was so hurt but I went on and blocked all of them on social media, on my phone and from my eldest daughter's phone. This was last week. I have since told my husband that they were all dead to me. He just held me and said he understands. Well, my mill just got a hold of my husband and asked why she couldn't contact me and said she wanted to ask me how I was. He told her why and stated that I wanted nothing to do with them and that he was on my side. She flipped and told everyone and people have been blowing up my husband saying that they can't believe I am selfish enough to make comparisons and that the dog surgery was an emergency and where I'm so close to the due date. They feel my surgery is unnecessary and I shouldn't expect people to help when it's not a definite that something will go wrong, like it was with the dog. Am I the asshole? ETA. Details on surgery and procedures. At 23 weeks they found tearing near the placenta and I have had to have several shots in my stomach to prevent me from going into early labor. I've started going into early labor four times since. The tear in the placenta has been causing multiple traveling blood clots and the procedures I've had to get done are to remove the blood clots so they don't travel to my heart. I've been put on several meds to try and prevent clotting but it's not that effective because I'm drug resistant due to other medical issues that I've had since birth. The dog surgery is correct a mobility issue, as she is losing mobility in her back leg. They called it something specific, though I can't remember the name. I want to say, drop foot, but I could be wrong. It's not life-threatening. It's a quality of life procedure. ETA again. We were completely well off prior to this. I don't care to hear some mumbo-jumbo of, don't have kids you can't afford. I stated we were good prior to this. We were able to pay for all the procedures out of pocket prior to the last one needed. And for those saying the quoted statement above I could say the same about the dog. Don't have a dog if you can't afford one. As I said, I've had three procedures paid for out of our pocket. My sill can't even get a partial first payment for the first procedure for her dog but has six kids of her own. Not the asshole I feel your pain. I had an epiphany moment with my in-laws when I fell down the steps. I've never been in so much pain. My foot immediately turned black. I couldn't reach my husband, so I called my in-laws to come watch my five-year-old and one-year-old, so I could go in the ambulance. We live in the same neighborhood, and my mill told me she couldn't possibly because she had to be at her friend's birthday dinner in two hours, and when I asked if my Phil could come, she said no because he is driving everyone to the dinner. Keep in mind they all have driver's licenses. I just filed it away, and never did them another favor ever again. You'll just have to file it away too. You know where you rank now, and what goes around comes around. Not the asshole at all. Just. Wow. I'm at a loss for words, foe once. 100% not the asshole and you have every right to feel how you do and to have nothing to do with them. Not the asshole. They're just mad now because they're getting called out on their favoritism. I'm glad your husband is on your side on this. Not the asshole. If they contribute nothing towards an unexpected surgery for a life-threatening issue when you have a good relationship, do not have an history of borrowing, not returning money and they are not in dire straits of their own, it makes sense that the relationship will be soured. It is possible that there was some miscommunication about the nature of the surgery? Did they offer any non-monetary help? Am I the asshole for feeding my cats off regular plates that people use? Using throwaway because friend follows my main. I have two cats. They eat off regular appetizer plates that are exclusively for them raised up on little platforms. Does the same job as some of those fancy whisker safe bowls for a whole lot cheaper. Occasionally I will use regular dinner plates instead of the appetize plates for certain foods that the cats will push around and onto the floor if not on a larger plate. 
I will rinse off the plates and put them in the dishwasher. I always do a sanitary cycle and heat dry. After they're cleaned they go back into cabinet where I keep my plates. This means I or a guest could have used a plate that a cat ate off of at one point. I had a friend over for dinner and after we ate she did a quick apartment walkthrough and saw that the plates the cats were eating off of were from the same set as the ones we ate dinner from. She asked about it and I said the same as above, she called me disgusting and left. She won't talk to me and has told my other friends that I'm a health hazard and gross person. I don't see anything wrong with it, but who knows maybe this is crazy cat lady behavior. So am I the asshole for using my dinner plates to feed my cats and those dinner plates most likely being used by people after they've been cleaned and put away? Edit. Some responses to the comments. 1. To the people saying my friend's reaction was a bit much. It was a bit unexpected, she's not really a germaphobe we used to live together before we moved to different areas. I do know she's from a family, and culture, where pets aren't really a thing and if they are they don't belong inside. She is under stress than usual having moved to a new city for grad school I'm chalking that to maybe contributing to everything. This happened last night so rn I'm cool with her still being angry enough to not want to talk but yeah our group of friends that have told me what she told them are also thinking the whole thing is getting a bit blown out of proportion. 2. To people suggesting I make some of the dinner plates cat exclusive you are most likely correct. I moved here a year ago got the cats 10 months ago and this was the first person to visit me so I've gotten very used to being the sole person. At this rate I'll wait for the college sales to start so I can grab those cheap plastic plates and my cats will stick with the nice plates lol since at this point I assume all four of my plates have been used by a cat. 3. To the people saying I am lazy or cheap for not buying pet bowls. If you read the post I mentioned whisker safe dishes. I'll elaborate if there is any hint of a rim the cats will not eat. Combine that with the fact that they need a raised whisker safe bowl as one stated originally. A plate is far cheaper for someone like me who's currently in grad school and operating on a tight budget. Edit 2. For people saying if I'm gonna use dinner plates for the cats regularly I should just butt them. Did you not see the word occasionally? To give you a number, looking at my budget tracker I have fed them off regular plates 10 times which in the grand scheme of feeding them twice a day is pretty infrequent in my mind. However their cat only appetizer plates are going in the dishwasher too so I guess every cup utensil, and bowl is no longer fit for humans to use according to some people in the comments. Not the asshole. She didn't have to be so weird to everybody about it. Does she also freak out because you don't have a special set of knives that you use only for cutting up raw meat and never for anything else? Or because every spoon in your house has been in a human mouth for multiple times? Sarcasm. Not the asshole. Your kitchen sponge probably has more dangerous bacteria growing on it than whatever your cats just ate off of. A cat eating off of a plate isn't going to contaminate it in any way that washing it won't take care of. She knows when she goes to restaurants that thousands of strangers previously drank from the same glass, right? Not the asshole. Used to do it all the time. They were elaborate gold-trimmed saucers because my cat was a beautiful diva lady, and I'd use them for people too. Not the asshole if the plate is washed afterwards. Who the hell cares who eats off of it? A cat, a dog, your Uncle Bob doesn't matter in the slightest.